Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. We're supposed to picture just the children of Israel, but our own spiritual journey where God found us and delivered us from and what he's brought us through. And we're supposed to relate that to our lives as we're listening to the storyline of how God led his own people. Verse 7, verse 6. Then they cried. No, here we go. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Then he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Exclamation point. Then he's going to launch into a verse and he's going to come back and repeat that phrase. And we're going to catch the pattern here. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. That sentence does not stand alone. It's going to be unpacked. A hungry soul, a longing soul. Such as sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. This sometimes is what it takes to make a soul become hungry. Darkness, bound in affliction and iron. Why? Verse 11, because they rebelled against the words of God. I just don't like how God said it. I don't like God's phrasing. I don't like God's identity. I don't like God's suggestions. I wish God would change his mind. They rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. So God offered him his words and his counsel. They rebelled. They contemned. They rejected they criticized that wherefore he brought down their heart with labor. That means their heart was lifted up against God's word. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. They had bands of iron. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. See the word iron refers back to verse 10 being bound in affliction and iron so verse 17 fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted they're afflicted hmm so affliction can serve to make my soul become hungry verse 10 such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death being bound in affliction and iron 17 fools because of their transgression what transgression well they rebelled against the clear pure words of god and they didn't appreciate his counsel so what's the result fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted that's to get their attention verse 18 their soul abhorreth all manner of meat hmm god's trying to get my soul to have the right appetite their soul abhorreth all manner of meat they draw near unto the gates of death sounds like a pattern verse 10 such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death being bound in affliction and iron here their soul can't stand being around any kind of food then they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he saveth them out of their distress distresses that sounds like a pattern but how is the pattern unpacking here it is verse 20 he sent his word and healed them now this is the same word that they rebelled against and they contemned and they criticized they cut they twisted they mocked they resisted in verse 11 but in verse 20 he sent his word the original same medicine and healed them this time they were hungry in their soul they got to a point where they had to experience affliction and iron so that their soul would be repulsed by other things so that they could be humbled enough to receive the healing he sent his word and healed them that's my favorite line out of this whole psalm he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions it doesn't say here that it was self-destruction but it is kind of their fault they would never have to go into affliction and iron or sit in the shadow of death or feel like their soul was sick or afflicted if they were not foolish verse 17 fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted it's god's proper treatment to get our attention to stop being foolish and self-destructive he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men exclamation point that's being repeated and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with 
rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then they are glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness. That's reverse. Turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into a dry ground. Why? A fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein to get their attention, to make them want God. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water. So that's the reverse and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation, spiritually hungry for God. And sow the fields, and plant the vineyards, which may yield fruit of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Again they are minished, and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. Guess what happened? Why Why would God have to apply affliction, pre- oppression, and sorrow, or allow that? Evidently, they changed their heart. Their heart was no longer hungry. He poureth contempt upon princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. Is this financially poor or spiritually poor? The poor in spirit. He setteth the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord.